Hello friends, in this video we're going to look at this Akai 4000DS Mark II reel-to-reel -reel recorder. This is from about 1979. Right, Scooter? I got this in a state sale recently. It was marked at $150 originally, which is approximately the value of it in today's market. I got it on the uh, half-off day, the last day, for half of that, so it was uh, 75 I tried this out briefly at the estate sale just by plugging it in and seeing if the lights came on and the motors would work and things, basic things like that. But uh, I haven't tried it out. So I'm going to hook it up and then uh, see how it goes. But before we do that, let's look at some of the features here. This is a four track player and recorder you have your option of playing or recording either four tracks which is the entire tape or you would have two sides of two tracks each and um, I think that's how this works anyway I've got a left right microphone microphone gain um, line meters for left and right uh, microphone and line for left and right tape monitor here are the basic tape controls. Forward, record, rewind, and fast forward. Got a pause feature. It's typically used for recording. Power, an equalizer, SOS. I'm not sure what that means aside from save our ship. Tape selector, low noise or wide range. It looks like that's some sort of cutoff filter maybe. We've got a tape indicator here. And we've got left and right mic inputs phones and uh, meter for left and right audio channels and adjustments this looks like a high quality uh, tape speed mechanism next let's look at the back so this is the back or perhaps the bottom depending on how you lay it down it's got feet under here that we've been using but we've also got feet here so you can lay it down horizontally if you want to. We've got a fan here to dissipate heat from the motor. This is in 1979 would be all solid state. Before then it might have been uh, vacuum tubes in the early 70s or the late 60s. Here you can see we've got uh, line out, line in, and uh, this looks like maybe a microphone connector. It's a DIN 5 maybe. Uh, here's the nameplate. Serial number. So next we're going to uh, get some tapes out that I've got and uh, get it going. Here's something I've just noticed. We've got some sort of wear or dirt here that indicates uh, that this has been used over the years. So, uh, you know, it isn't a pristine unit, but it could looks to be in very good shape and can be cleaned up if I decide to resell it, although I might end up keeping it. So the earlier reel-to-reel -reel that I have that I've had since I was a kid uh, is a voice of music from 1963 that it's all tubes and it has similar features to this. Uh, one difference in the voice of music, it has built-in speakers and this is doesn't seem to have any speaker vents so I'm going to say that uh, it only has uh, line outputs and inputs. So this is designed to be connected to a larger system, at least for playback. You can imagine you do home recording here if you want to with microphones. This is looks like a standard quarter inch uh, phono plug that a lot of basic microphones had in this era, consumer level microphones. And um, the other thing, listen to it on headphones if you want to. So in the late 70s you could still buy uh, pre-recorded tapes if you wanted to and this type of recorder could be a hi-fi recording playback medium, kind of an alternative to LPs. Now before we uh, do any actual tape playing or hookup, I'm going to kind of repeat what I did at the estate sale to show you. Got power here. I hear a little hum. You can see this spindle moving. 
do forward, we can do fast forward, rewind, everything seems to be good. I'll try out a few things. This is the tape counter. Now I also feel a little bit of vibration here which I've known is typical of a uh, non-polarized plug that's plugged in the wrong way so we'll fix that and get back to you shortly so to show you the procedure I uh, turned it off still felt the vibration here which is also characteristic of a possible shock hazard so I turned the non-polarized plug around that's something if I keep it I'll definitely put a polarized plug on it or even a grounded plug um, so at this point it's sort of an annoyance but it's a bit of a shock hazard it's not something that's that's a good idea maybe it made sense in 1979 but we've improved since then so now that we've tried out the basic functions let's mount a couple of tapes and see how that goes so I'm going to kind of figure out how to run this as I go bear with me if this is a little slow or skip ahead to the next chapter Usually you stick these on here and then you kind of pull this out and twist a little bit to give it a solid mounting. Looks like we've got to go through some sort of a... Here's where the tape head is, so we've got to go through some combination to get that going. Here's a take-up reel that I have. This is actually for 8mm film, but it turns out it's the same format. So to give you a little something to think about while I do this, this tape I believe is one I recorded when I was a kid off of a TV set and it's for a little animated short film called Great. That film was published on VHS at one point but I wasn't bright enough to uh, pick up a copy so maybe I can find it on eBay. Now, I don't have anything hooked up to this anyway, so let's try fast forward. No, I don't destroy the tape. Okay, that seems to be working well. So I guess this runs, but it doesn't. Uh, well, I don't have the power on switch for some reason. I don't know if it's supposed to run like that without the power on, but that's due to this uh, mechanism here, evidently. Not real sure where the play we've got forward, so that's probably play. Now we're probably on pause. Uh, oh, this is says start, so that releases the pause. It's a mechanical. Uh, okay, so that looks like it would work. We're not getting any sound because I'm not connected to anything. But we'll stop here. I'll do some more connections and then we'll see what happens. I've hooked this up to my standard test system here in my little lab area. We'll turn this on, go to forward, and see if something comes out. Oh, I unplugged it. Okay, let's plug it back in. Definitely of the older generation will see you and hope that you will strive with all your might to achieve what was denied to us. From Bonkers and Pacifism by Albert Einstein, an essay in the book The World as I See It. Sounds like that was some sort of uh, narration that I did as a kid, which I'd totally forgotten about. So we do hear a little something working. It's, uh, let's do some fast forward and then see where we go. Kind of interesting to hear if my voice has changed after more than 40 years. Okay. Anything to hear so far? Not yet. See, there's a cool uh, aliasing effect on the video. I don't see that in real life, but for those of you who are into signal processing, this is what a friend of mine once called the wagon wheel effect, after what you saw in old movie westerns. 
Anything to hear? Not so far. We'll keep going. There's the uh, Looks like this was two tapes that had been spliced together. Maybe the splice didn't hold. So we'll, uh, I think I'm going to turn this one over and sort of cut to the chase. We'll see how that goes. Okay, I've put what was originally the take up reel on the left, which has the effect of turning over and getting the other two sides of the tape, which may have something completely different on them. Okay, so that sounds like the film I was telling you about, except at high speed. So let's do our tape speed, which is here somewhere. Bear with me. This says equalizer, but also shows tape speed, so maybe that'll do it. Oh, tape speed must be somewhere else. All right, we'll figure that out and get back to you. Can't find anything that explicitly says tape speed, but we do have our choice of tracks here, so let's try that. Okay, that wasn't it. At least playing at the wrong speed will keep the YouTube uh, copyright cops from beating me to a bloody pulp. This might be backwards high speed. So this was probably recorded at the lower speed that's used for reel-to-reels, which is uh, whatever, three and three quarters, as opposed to seven and a half, which is double that speed. You know, you can make a trade-off between uh, recorded sound quality versus, uh, you know, the cost of the tape. As a kid who didn't have a lot of extra spending money, I would have uh, definitely gone for the lower speed. So I'm going to try something here that I don't think will work, which is I'm going to try to go over here to record. Even though I don't want to record, I think this is a sort of a record safety button that, and I can't even go that far with the switch, but we'll see. Okay. Okay. Okay, well maybe I'll have to look the manual up on this to figure it out, because I just don't see it. Unless it's in the back. Well here's something I totally didn't think of on the tape speed that I got out of reading the manual. They say the tape speed is determined by the cap stand somewhere. And they tell you to put it on the storage post. So we'll have to figure that out. So this looks like the storage post. I'll have to read which part is the cap stand. I thought it was this rubber part, but maybe not. Oh, here we go. Looks like we unscrew that. Put it here. We screw it so we won't lose it. See, I just learned something and maybe you did too. So let's get it all going again and see if we hear normal speed movie soundtrack. And I've unplugged it again. Let's fix that. Okay. So here we go. Okay, well I happen to recognize this as part of Revolution 9, so this might be a Beatles tape, at least on this part of it. Yep, okay, better shut this off before YouTube busts me, although if they think this is any form of pirating they have no idea what pirating is okay well I guess we'll call that a success all of the functions of it work so far um, 
In a future video, after I figure out uh, where I get some more tapes, I'll do that and we'll try out the record functions and also uh, look inside it, which I usually do with most equipment. So, that ends it for now. Thanks for watching and bye bye.